Hello. Thank you for joining us for this Working with Friends session. I'm Stefan Bender, CEO of Film France, the French National Film Commission. Today we're going to talk about what France can offer your production. We're going to talk about the tax rebate for international production. We're going to talk about the physical production in France with our case study. And we're going to talk about funding that are open to co-production with the French regions. First, we're going to have some words from our partners. Cher Marie Maspontey, cher Mathieu Fournet, cher Stéphane Bender, dear members of the Franco-German Film Academy of the Centre National du Cinéma et de l'Image Animée and of Film France, dear representatives of the Ile de France, Bretagne, Nouvelle Aquitaine regions, dear producers of all countries. It is a pleasure to welcome you on the screen. With a huge effort of imagination, I can see you all in the same room in front of me. Let us brighten this virtual meeting with a touch of magic and pretend we are in a cinema. One thing is not a fiction, however. It is your determination to keep producing films together. Your continued will to find solutions, to innovate in every sector of the film and cultural industry is truly admirable. It is crucial to underline that in spite of the current difficulties, all the players of the film industry in France are fully mobilized to work even more closely in cooperation with their international partners. We are here today to celebrate and to encourage the dynamism of the Franco-German cooperation in the film industry. Indeed, Germany ranks third among the countries shooting the most films and TV series in France, right after the United Kingdom and the United States. Just think of Commissaire Dupin in Bretagne, of the series Une Table en Provence, or of Das Boot, which was shot in the beautiful Marais Poitevin. It is also comforting to realize that each year about 30 films are released thanks to the common work of Franco-German film teams and production companies. Let me wish you much courage and confidence through these difficult times and thank you again for keeping on brightening our lives with fruitful artistic cooperation. It will be an honor and a pleasure for the Embassy to welcome you again in 2022. I would also like uh, to take the opportunity to introduce Sofia Sa as the new attaché audiovisuel who is going to be your contact person at the cultural service of the Embassy. And I wish you an exciting meeting. Madam Ambassador, dear creative partners, my name is Sophia Saar and it is with great pleasure that I inaugurate my duties as audiovisual attaché at the French Embassy in Berlin by welcoming you to the showcase organized by Film France. Although we are not able to receive you for Frühstückschick, we are pleased that this annual meeting is being held online. This year, in particular, it is essential that we remain united in European filmmaking. The audiovisual department of Institut Français, Germany, is there to assist you from co-production to distribution by fostering meetings between French and German professionals for feature and short film, whether documentary, series or fiction. We are proud to join the effort of the Berlinale Talent and Forum to support young talent and innovative cinema as well as several festivals taking place in Germany that reflect the dynamism of contemporary film creation. More than ever, we need you to keep European cinema alive. Together, we will face the challenges that the health crisis imposes on us. I wish you a very good EFM week. Bonjour, guten Morgen, good morning. In the name of CNC, the French National Film Board, I'm extremely happy to be with you again, once again, for this traditional meeting during the European film market at the Berlinale, 
Thanks to the French Embassy in Germany, thanks to Film France, the French National Film Commission, and thanks to our friends at the French German Film Academy for organizing uh, this event once again despite all the challenges. I want to take this opportunity to thank our friends at the German Film Board, the Film for der Rungenstalt, FFA, for all the coordination, the meetings, and the very strong relationship that France and Germany have put in place during this time of challenges and this time of crisis. One example that was extremely important for the industry is when we put in place a reciprocity between our two insurance uh, funds for the film industry and the insurance fund covering the COVID-19 risks. This is, I believe, an example for the rest of Europe and now the films that are co-produced between France and Germany with the help of the Mini Traité or Bilateral Film Fund uh, are now covered whether they are shooting in France or in Germany, whether they are a French or a German majority film. This was extremely important for the sector. I want to take this opportunity as well to tell you that France is still open for business. Since May, shootings have been continuing in France thanks to the insurance fund. More than 450 films and TV shootings have been insured through the, the fund put in place by the government, and we have maintained a very strong activity of shootings in the territory. I want also to tell all producers of a, all around the world, and not only in Europe, that they are welcome uh, in France, and we have put in place a special authorization with the Home Affairs Ministry that are allowing us uh, to let professionals, non-EU professionals coming from North America, from the UK, from Israel, from South America, to come and work in France, whether for a shooting activity or for a post-production activity. We are still a country open for co-production, open for international um, productions coming to shoot in France, and we are extremely happy and extremely hopeful for the future. And I want also to uh, salute the diversity of the Berlinale selection this year. Two films that have been uh, produced with the help of the Mini Traité, the French-German co-production fund, are in selection. And we also have a lot of international films co-produced with France in the various uh, sections and selections uh, of the Berlinale. I wish you a very good day. You're in good hands with the team of Film France, and hopefully we will be in Berlin very soon and I hope before the next Berlinale. Hello, my name is Leonie Schmidtmer. I'm the Secretary General of the French German Film Academy. For those who don't know us yet, we are an association of French German film professionals and we were founded 20 years ago on the initiatives of the political leaders in France and in Germany in the framework of the Elysee contract. Um, which wants to bring together France and Germany not only on the economic and the um, political side, but also on the cultural one. We act um, in, uh, for the cooperation between the two countries um, concerning film funding, co-productions, and we have a yearly meeting which takes normally place in November where we bring together professionals from, the bo from both countries but also other European countries to talk about uh, political subjects and to topics and um, yeah, to network and bring furthermore together our, um, our both countries. Um, we had the chance in the past years to organize um, the Frühstück Schick, our French-German breakfast at the French Embassy in Berlin. And we are very sad that we can't do this event this year. Um, but we hope that we, yeah, that we can return to normal events very soon. And yeah, I wanted to thank our partners at the Embassy, at the Institut Francais in Berlin and Film France also for the opportunity to do this little introduction today. If you want to have a little bit more information about us, um, have a look on the internet. We are the French-German Film Academy. Thank you very much. Let's start now with the tax rebate for international production, the TRIP, as we call it. Let me introduce you to my colleague, Laurie Adas, who is our tax rebate expert. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Here we go with the TRIP presentation. 
Just to start, a quick word about who we are. We are the French Film Commission. We provide services and free services for all producers who want to shoot or to work in France. We can rely on a network of 32 film commission all over France, including overseas territories. We are providing expertise on the tax rebate for international production, the so TRIP, and we are assessing projects eligibility. So what we do, basically we are your one-stop shop. We provide information about location, regulation, technical facilities, um, and also French line producers. Basically we are helping production to work in France. And most interesting for you, we are assisting producer applying the trip. So a quick word about the French situation. France is ready to shoot with non-French production. Since May 2020, film permits are being issued and shoots are allowed to go ahead. More than 400 shootings took place in France in 2020. Even with local restriction, curfew or lockdown, filming remains possible on a 24 hour, seven day a week basis. Clear guidelines are available to producers and filmmakers to ensure compliance with the new safety rules. So there is two ways of working with France. One way is the official co-production. It means all state French subsidies through a co-producer and we have dedicated co-production schemes. The other way is through the tax rebate for international production with a production services company and you get a 30 or 40 tax rate on your eligible spend. So what is a trip? First of all, trip is generous. It can go up to 40%. Trip is simple, no red tape. You just bring a deal memo, a script, and a first estimate of your budget. Trip is reliable. The PSC, the French PSC collects trip every year from the French tax services. Trip is fast. You start spending the day you send the application to the CNC, the French National Center for Cinema. And now you can get a brand new 10% VFX bonus that we will talk later about. So as I was saying, trip is simple. So what kind of formats are eligible? Basically, all kinds of scripts, projects are eligible. Live action, animation, VFX, VR, feature films, short films, VFX, post-production, series, the single or the whole season, web, OTT or TV, and all budgets. There are two um, not eligible formats that are documentaries and commercials. So what about the criteria? First of all, you have to work with a French PSC. You have to spend a minimum of 250,000 euro or half of your total budget, whichever is the lowest. For live action projects, it's five days of shooting minimum. And of course, there are no minimum days of shooting required for VFX or animation. You have to pass a cultural test, which is pretty easy to pass. Just to give you a few examples of the diversity of the projects that are eligible for the trip, we're talking about Mission Impossible, The Hunger Games, The Minion, in VFX Blade Runner or American God. So how to assess the trip? The trip is available through a company that is subject to corporate income tax in France. They act as a production services company, a PSC, for a foreign producer. They receive the trip through their YOLO tax return. It can either be a, an existing company, a subsidiary for, of the foreign production, or a special purpose vehicle, SPV. Also, don't hesitate to take a look to our PSC database available on Film France websites with more than 100 professionals with a huge variety of languages 
knowing how to assess the trip and shoot with a non-fresh production. So what is eligible? Salaries, wages of European writers and actors plus social contributions are eligible and they are capped. Salaries paid for French or European direction and production staff, wages, incidentals plus social contribution are eligible and there is no cap. Expenditures for technical goods and services based in France, including VFX, animation, post-production facilities are eligible and there is no cap. Renting location and constructing set, sets are eligible and there is no cap. Accommodation, catering, travel of all cast and crew are eligible and they are kept. Transport of material, depreciation expenses are eligible and there is no cap. So as I was saying, trip is generous. How much will you get? There is a 30 million cap, which means that you will have had 100 million in eligible. If you have such a project, you are very welcome. And another thing to notice, if you plan to spend, let's say, 1 million in France, but you change your mind and you decided to spend twice more, don't worry and don't hesitate because you will get more rebates. The rule is simple. The more you spend, the more you get. Last but not least, the big news is that you can now reach a 40% on all your eligible spends if you get the 10% VFX related bonus. So this is the rule for the 10% VFX related tax rebate bonus. The bonus goes for projects which are VFX intensive projects and projects that would spend more than 2 million euros in eligible spend VFX related expenses. To summarize, in order to qualify for the 10% bonus, a project must be a live action fiction film. Note that animation projects do not qualify. It must include a substantial amount of digital visual effect, at least 15% of the total number of shoots, or an average one and a half shoot per minute are subject to digital processing. It must include 2 million euros of eligible expenses related to the digital processing of the shoots. And you have to pass a test. If French expenditure is principally related to digital visual effects, the VFX test will be used. If the French expenditures is principally related to non-VFX expenditures, it has to pass the live action tests and shoot for at least five days in France. Please note that the green screen filming counts. So more than, 30, so more than 300 projects and 25 nationalities have benefited from the trip. Here you will find a few examples of the diversity of the projects. Animation, feature films, series, blockbuster, VFX projects, So these two lovely faces are here for any requests or guidance you may need. So do not hesitate to contact, contact us, Stefan Bender, the Film France CEO, and me, Laurie Hades, the head of production and tax rebate. Thank you very much. So let's jump now to our case study. We're gonna talk about Rose, a Danish feature film which was shot in France. Let me introduce you to Crystal Carlson. Hello, Crystal. Hello. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, thanks. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so my first question will be very simple. Crystal, who are you? Uh, I'm a line producer at Nordisk Film in Copenhagen. And so you, you happen to have shot in France last year uh, for Rose. Why did you choose France to film Rose? Uh, Rose um, takes part of the film takes place in France. 
It's about um, two sisters going on a holiday to Paris and Normandy in 1997 on a coach. And the one sister, she's struggling with the mental disease and the other sister meets both the uh, discrimination and pity from the other passengers on the bus. So, um, well, we went to France because part of it, the film takes place there. <laughs> yeah, the choice was obvious. Yeah. Uh, so where did you shoot? Uh, we shot in October last year and we shot uh, on Versailles, Dom des Invalides, uh, Place de la Concorde, uh, by Pantheon at a hotel, at Place de l'Alma, Monet's Garden, and uh, Normandy on the coast, and by a DJ museum. Okay, how long did, did it last? Only nine days of shooting, but we uh, went a lot of different places. And how did it happen? Did you work with a French company, or were you there by yourselves? Yes, no, we worked uh, with a production service company called First Step, uh, and um, that was really, Great and helpful. How did you meet them? How did you find them? We met first step through a Danish girl uh, who told me to call them because they were one of the companies who would be able to help us to get the permits to shoot on these very difficult locations. They were really a great help for, the, for, for this, I guess. Definitely. Uh, they help us with everything like the crew, the budget, uh, COVID-19 regulations and everything. And talking about the COVID-19, I, I think there must have been some special processes that were put in place. Yeah. Today, was it? Well, uh, first of all, we had some guidelines in, at Nordisk Film. And uh, uh, together with First, Day, we in, with First Step, we implanted this in the whole shooting. And they hired a nurse. And um, also they helped us to book a hotel where we... Book two separate, or they booked two separate floors for us. Uh, they privatized the part of the restaurant, both for breakfast and dinner. Um, they also booked a lot of meeting room rooms for us, so we could have hair and makeup there, costumes. We had a TV lounge area only for the Danish cast and crew, and all this kept us isolated uh, as much as possible. And um, then, just before starting shooting. We PCR tested the whole French and Danish crew and cast. And uh, in the beginning, we only uh, tested once a week. But um, then at one point, one of the French crew was tested positive. So we started testing every second day with the rapid tests. And that really helped us. Um, and so you, you, you didn't have any problem with, with COVID, even if there were some positive tests, you didn't have to stop shooting. No. No, I think the, the test, uh, testing a lot more helped it just going on and we could continue everything as planned. And we, we at, at, by the end, we had four tested positive, but we just sent them home as soon as they were tested positive. So that worked really well. But I also think that due to the high hygiene on set and separating people into groups, wearing face masks all the time, having extra restrooms and PAs helping a lot, and individual, individually packed snacks and stuff like that, we really uh, avoided virus from spreading. And let's talk about the location. So you mentioned some of them earlier, uh, yeah. but my main question would be, were you allowed to shoot everywhere you wanted to? Yes, I think. I really think the French uh, line producer, Avi Osso, and uh, the location manager, Rosita Canata, made it possible for us to shoot uh, the most amazing places um, and they really did a great work for us and I know it wasn't easy to get the permits. Uh, I think it was the first time in 25 years that anyone was allowed to film inside Dom des Invalides by Napoleon's tomb. Really? This was really special and also being able to shoot inside Versailles and Monet's garden, allow, they allowed us to do everything we asked for and that was really of great production value for the film. That's Yeah, you, you were really lucky because most of the time there is one location yeah. which is not allowed, but you made a 100% score. Yeah. We were allowed to run through the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles with, in a wheelchair with a little boy. Are there any differences between the way the your Danish crew works and the French crews? I don't think there are hardly any differences um, in the way we work. Um, and the French crew and the Danish crew got really well along. Um, so that was good. Yeah, no problems. 
<laughs> and uh, uh, even with the working hours, because usually a lot of people say that in French the working hours are kind of special. Uh, are they right or? Um, I think they're almost the same as in Denmark. Um, and I don't know if it was the way uh, the line producer was able to talk to his crew, but um, they were always flexible. So that was really yeah. great. And uh, another question concerning the crew, which can be, uh, I think, interesting for our audiences. Uh, did your crew like the food, the French food? They loved it, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And now let's jump to the financial side of it. Uh, so you benefited from the tax rebate for international production. Yes, uh, any comments about it? Do, did you find it efficient or was it a problem? Or, or was it? No, it's been really efficient. Uh, and uh, first step help us with all the details. So it's, yeah, it's been very easy. <laughs> Maybe one general question is about the challenges that you had to face. What was the biggest one? What was something that really stays in your mind as, yes, we did it? I think uh, shooting in Paris under, during a pandemic is uh, <laughs> quite amazing. And uh, being able to, to shoot everything we wanted. And um, I got a little, I panicked a little bit when one was tested positive from the crew. But uh, yeah, I think we did that really well and I also think uh, we had a quite a low budget compared to American feature films so it was hard for us to uh, close down traffic but um, yeah I think that was the hardest part of in Paris that's uh, different than Denmark where you it's much easier to shut down big streets and everything that's a bit hard in Paris but I guess with the right money you can do it <laughs> <laughs> and the right people as well and the right people, yeah, yeah the, you know the, the, the The, the French production service company know exactly well how to, to stop the traffic and to get the permits. Yeah. And this is yeah. the real yeah. value that they're bringing to you. And we managed at the end, so they did a good work. And uh, so my final question will be uh, a question for the future is when will Rose be released? Sometime autumn 2021. Oh, okay. Depending so are... on when the cinemas opens again. Yes, I think we are all hoping for the yeah. cinemas to open again soon. <laughs> and we're all hoping to see Rose on screen. So thank you very much, Christophe. It was really a pleasure to have you with us today. French regions are dedicated partners for international co-productions. Let's discover what they have to offer. Some of them are with us today. Hello, my name is Anne-Cécile Roland. I work for the Région Bretagne, the Brittany region, which is uh, located in the west of France. We are surrounded by the sea, uh, so we have a lot of uh, coast uh, you can explore, and also a lot of cities and the countryside. Brittany region has a, a strategic plan for cinema and audiovisual programs. We have festivals, we have residency for authors, producers, Uh, such as the Group West and the LIM, Less is More program, which is supported by the Creative Europe. And uh, we welcome film from all around Europe and the world. We have 40 different production companies in Brittany, and they do very different things, from short films to long feature, from animation to fiction. Uh, documentary as well as a very important place and uh, we welcome shootings and production company and, and people uh, from all around the globe with our different uh, supports that we can offer. The strategic plan for uh, Brittany has been reviewed in uh, 2019 and then we have developed uh, a strategy in three steps which means that we are able now to support various projects coming from various places. So we have developed uh, international funds, uh, special funds. Uh, one is for co-development with a company based in Brittany. And we are able to support films in, in development up to 40,000 euros. This grant is unlimited in the, in the whole wide world. We can work with companies coming from Europe, but also from America, from South America, from Africa, from Australia, wherever you are. And if you find a partnership in Brittany, you can come and, and ask for help. <laughs> Keeping in mind that this is a development fun we are also uh, able to open our grant for production to co-production uh, programs 
We have been able to support very different kind of movies uh, for the past two years. Uh, some are still in development. Uh, some are from Colombia, Mexico. Uh, others are also from uh, Eastern Europe. And these films are different. They go from fiction to animation movie. Uh, and we also are very happy because some of the films that we have supported in production uh, that were international co-production were very well uh, received uh, uh, to give you three different uh, examples. Uh, at the last uh, Sundance Film Festival, the documentary, the animated documentary, should I say, uh, Flea, co-produced by Brittany in France and a company called Vivement Lundi, and also co-produced by Denmark, uh, was awarded the, the grand prize for the documentary. And uh, we also supported uh, two years ago a fiction movie that was based in Spain. The movie is called Aquelar uh, by Pablo Aguero. And the film was co-produced by a company based in Brittany, Tita Film. And they were able to bring money from Brittany to this international project that is now uh, represented uh, in the Spanish awards, selected for eight different Goyas. Because we also welcome people without funding them and, uh, and project without funding them, but uh, bringing help through for uh, Film France, uh, such as a, a TV series, very popular German TV series called Commissar Dupin, uh, Commissaire Dupin, which is the story of this uh, German commissaire who's based in Brittany trying to resolve uh, criminal affairs. The TV series is based uh, on, on books uh, written for Brittany but with German characters in it and uh, it is a big success in Germany and it's also a big success on French TV because the TV series has been bought by the, the French public channels. So if you're interested to visit Brittany and discover the whole potentials of working with talented producer, do not hesitate to contact us. Hi, uh, I am Stéphane Martinet. I'm the International Promotion Manager of Film Paris Region, the Film Commission. We promote the city itself and its suburb, the historical heart of the region that uh, almost uh, everybody uh, knows, but also the uh, 19th and 20th century uh, suburb uh, of the city, where you find very good examples of industrial architecture and workers' uh, homes. And then uh, the outskirt of the region, uh, which uh, is composed mainly of uh, farmland and villages and small towns, some of which, like Provins, are world heritage and where you can uh, shoot medieval or 17th and 18th century fictions. Paris Region Council offers a 50% film fund for international co-productions, a recent scheme that allows a French minority co-producer to get this 50% help. The amount starts at 100,000 euros and 500,000 euros cap. You get 50% on that. The aid is 50 to 250,000 euros. You need a French co-producer who is going to handle um, the filing. All of this supposes and entails expenses on Paris region soil so that it feeds both our companies and workers uh, of our field. We can provide you with a lot of information regarding locations, technicians, VFX companies. We know them well since we have been created in 2004 and work with them for a very long time. There is very little that we don't know and very few people who do not know us. So we are an entry to our country, so to speak. The Paris region remains the main region of production in France. You are very welcome to come and shoot here. I am Stéphane Martinet. You can contact me at stéphane.martinet at filmparisregion.com. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here, thanks to Film France, to present the new Aquitaine region and its specific actions on the international level. I'm Nathalie Bremont, working for the ALCA agency, and I'm in charge of the Future Film Funds. 
New Aquitaine goes from the border of Spain up north to the border of Chateau de la Loire. It's the biggest region in France and has the size of Austria. With 720 kilometers of Atlantic coastline, four commercial harbors, 10 airports, its countryside and big cities, New Aquitaine has become a very attractive territory, which provides any kind of location you're looking for, apart from the Eiffel Tower. Um, in terms of cinema industry, it's the number two region after Paris. Thanks to the large scope of its service providers and facilities, its specialized school, its professional networks, the diversity of its natural and man-made location, and last but not least, an important animation cluster called Magelis, the new Aquitaine region provides a real opportunity for filmmakers. Our agency provides a wide range of backing services for cinema and TV industry. We support creation and production through our funds, our regional film commission, artist in residence programs, partnership with labs and international film markets, and distribution of film within the region through an art house cinema network. The new Aquitaine offers an ecosystem of cinema industry and talent working on an international level. That's important for you. Um, we have a specific funds for international production where you can partner up with one of our local producers and shoot the movie totally as well in the world, as long as you do some local expenses in hiring crew or doing post-production, that, that's how you, you see how you do it. Um, it applies to every genre, animation, feature film, documentaries, and at every step of the creation process, script writing, development, and production. We were actually the first region to settle this international production fund with such amount in 2012. We manage a 7 million euro film fund, which reaches 11 million with local governments, Charente, Charente Maritime, Dordogne, Gironde, Lande, and lot garonne In terms of requirements, the French share of the project has to be equal or greater than 10%. Subsidies at every stage of the creation process can be added to one another for the same project. And the local government funds can also be added to the regional one. Well, you can find more details with figures in the brochure linked to with this panel. Because we have local cancers that can come on top of that, the production funds can go higher than 200,000 euros. You have to spend 100% of the money on our territory. Uh, some of our local producers are attending the Berlinale if you want to know more from the production side. Uh, thanks to the funding and services we offer, many production and post-production companies are talent and talent as well, are settling in our region. Today, you can do a movie from A to Z in New Aquitaine. This year, the Berlinale, there are two movies in the forum section that we funded and have, are produced by local companies. From Where We Stood by Christophe Cognier and produced by L'Atelier Documentaire. Night Nursery by Mumu Nisanu, co-produced by Vrai Vrai Film. And in the panorama section, Theo and the Metamorphosis by Damien Oduli is produced by Kidam, a company recently settled in our region. It is important to stress that we are also working on an international level through labs and with some of our festivals that have an international scope, like Biarritz Latin American Film Festival, Poitiers Film Festival, and the Independent Film Festival of Bordeaux. We welcome many foreign directors in our artist in residence so that's many ways to help you with your projects. So we will be delighted to hear about your project and start new partnership with you. So please do not hesitate to contact us during or after the terminal, of course. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for attending this Working with France session. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us at the EFM or by sending us an email. Hope to see you very soon in France.